Thanks for joining us for the building of Brownwood. In this episode, we'll bring you part two of our exclusive interview with the Morris family as they share how the lessons learned at the original Brownwood were put to work here in the villages. We'll also get resident reaction to the opening of Brownwood and Paddock Square. You won't want to miss a minute, so sit down, relax, and get ready for another very special edition of the building of Brownwood. Paddock Square in Brownwood is another truly special place where good friends gather for a great time. Wherever you look, you'll see attention to detail from designers, landscapers, and construction crews who have worked hard to create this authentic replica of a 100-year-old Florida cattle town. And here on West Torch Lake Drive, you can't walk a few feet without hearing people talk about how excited they are to be here all there is to see and do at Brownwood and Paddock Square. So let's check in with a couple of them and see what all the excitement is about. Very nice. I mean, it brings back the old Brownwood, what they were trying to portray. Totally awesome. We were over here the other night dancing, and uh, everybody was just excited and having fun. I felt like I was in my 20s again. We love it. The detail is absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. And what I thought was really cool was the cow tracks, the horse tracks, and the uh, ground everywhere he walked around and it looks just like you took the pictures. Mm -hmm. All right folks you've been watching the V-mails and now you're here. How are you feeling? Really excited that it's open now and I, I can't believe the the authenticity of all the stuff that they've done here. It looks it, terrific. Just terrific. How do you like the attention to detail? Uh, it's incredible. I've been telling everybody about it and we, we just couldn't wait to get here and see it all and, and every time I felt a little anxiety about selling our home on Long Island which we've been in 36 years. I take a deep breath and I go to my video <laughs> and I watch you. And then I feel okay. We will enjoy it. It's a great place to be. We're going to happy hour now. It's one of these uh, situations where you have to see it to believe it. People are having a good time throughout Paddock Square and Brownwood, that's for sure. And the Barnstorm Theater is another place that's full of excitement. It's here that I ran into Danny Tilton, mingling with our residents at the ticket window. Right. Well, 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 what do we have here? Danny Tilton. Hey, Gary. <laughs> You're in line just like a regular movie goer. What are you doing, man? Make sure everything's working right. Okay. Yeah, but you can go inside them. to do that. You were going to get a ticket and go see a movie. I do got the keys. <laughs> what am I thinking? Huh? <laughs> well, hey, you're thinking what I was thinking a couple nights ago, and we've already enjoyed a couple movies here. It's oh, fantastic. Good. good. You like but, it? Well, I like it, but just think, you know, this is like history or deja vu, because you and I were standing right here when this was dirt and footers and now just a few months fast forwarded how are you feeling now that the barnstorm's open yeah it's a great sense of accomplishment uh, for all the guys that's worked on this uh kudos kudos one of the builders very good man put up uh, most everything you're looking at on the outside too. holy cow a lot of hands you know helped to make it happen and that's right it's kind of fun just stand here and watch people the smiles going in and out you've got to feel a great sense of satisfaction that we do that we do all of us all of us how many guys Absolutely. you have on this project 25 25 wow. good ones. Okay, and now, and then now they all go in and watch, so it works out great. All right, now instead of two people in line, there's about 15, Dan, so I'm going to let you get back in line. Right, thank you. I will catch up with all you right, later, my friend. Yourself, man. See you later, Dan. Not only are the residents having a great time on Paddock Square, but so is our good friend Ted Graham here at the log cabin. And well, there are all kinds of firsts at the opening of Brownwood, and first person to perform live here on the stage was Emily Graham, your daughter, Ted. How did you feel seeing your little girl up there? Well, it was, it was just amazing, her being the first performer at Paddock Square and me having an opportunity to be involved with the project and, you know, really seeing it from, you know, from conception to final completion and my daughter's being open performers was uh, very special to me. And not only just opening night, but 
It's going to continue good times out here, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Just, you know, what I saw with my daughter to open perform at a venue where there was just going to be live entertainment seven days a week, year round, for years and years to come, and all the residents that would enjoy that and what it would mean to everyone. So I just saw it as the beginning of a really great, long, beautiful process. We're going to enjoy it together, my friend. Thank you. Overall, it looks like everyone's having a boot scooting good time enjoying their first experience at Brownwood. In our last episode, we journeyed down memory lane with Mark, Jennifer, and Tracy as they took us back to where it all began, the original Brownwood in Central Lake, Michigan. Now in part two of our interview, listen as they discuss how their success at the original Brownwood translated into making your retirement dreams come true in our hometown. We're continuing now with our interview with Tracy, Mark, and Jennifer. And we could probably talk about Brownwood all day long. You've got such great stories, but we want to talk a little bit and hear the story about how the Brownwood success translated into what you're doing now here in the villages. So maybe you could tell us what each of your responsibilities are here. We're very similar to our Brownwood days, actually. Um, I'm more front of the house in my brother's back of the house. So I handle sales and marketing, but I like to say I have the best job. I get to personally witness what this place, the villages, does for people. It, it really, it changes their lives, and that's very rewarding. I wake up every day and feel very blessed to do what I do. You're, you're the day-to-day -day guy, right? If there's a decision that has to be made, if there's a problem, it's going to your desk, isn't it? Usually not. It's usually going to some of these other guys to solve. I usually get the ones that uh, get by them that, that, or they need help with. We're change agents. Uh, you know, uh, we're here because we're uh, adaptable. We've come this far because we are all, we, including you, are able to, able to make the changes necessary at the time. What we do, we adapt. Shift and roll, baby. You're surrounded by people you trust. It, the team, team, yeah, team. it makes it so much easier to take a risk and to try something because you know there's always someone there for you. Always. Someone's got your back. <laughs> Tracy, what do you do? Tell people you've got the best job, right? I absolutely <laughs> three positively three, have the best job. <laughs> um, I get to work with a lot of very incredibly talented people and that help create the environment that uh, that we live in here in the villages. It's uh, yeah, it's a you great get to job. Shop too. <laughs> I do get to shop. She's a professional shopper. <laughs> I'm a professional shopper. And I'm not a shopper. I am a buyer. Right. Well, there's <laughs> a big it's difference. A, it's a big difference because I know what I want and I go and get it. <laughs> and I have a lot of people who help me go and get it too. I put the layers on that make this place look the way it does. I like to say that she has an unlimited budget and she exceeds it. <laughs> it is not true. I am very, very budget conscious. I am, now wait a minute. They're ganging up on you. Uh, no. I, I, it's about to be my turn in the barrel. That's another trait she got from our mother. <laughs> well, your, your mom, obviously, she left her mark on so many yes, she great did. buildings. She was wonderful. And you, basically we're an understudy, right? Did you learn from the best? I, I think I did, yes. I hope I did. I hope I learned, but definitely from the best. Oh, you I'd did. say yeah. she'd be very proud. Yeah, mm -hmm. your, your buildings are amazing too. You're a great designer. I think she'd be proud because I have two granddaughters. I think that's why she'd be yeah, proud. Yeah, that's what she'd be proud <laughs> of. That's right. <laughs> that would be her favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's rewind now to even before the three of you came down from Michigan. Tell us about the beginning and how your family got involved in what became Florida's friendliest hometown. When the villages started, it was Orange Blossom Gardens. And at the time, Harold was a partner with Al Tarzan. But Harold was 72 years old at the time when Al said, hey, let's either sell the place or buy me out, you know, I'm ready to retire, how about you? Our grandfather, Harold, said, Gary, go, go check the place out 
If you think there's anything there, at the time I think we were 1,500 acres and they were selling like 30 homes a year. And um, so my dad came down and said, you know, Dad, I, I think we could make a go of this place. So my dad convinced him to come on down, put a home on Paradise Lake for him, and he subsequently moved here and lived here the rest of his life. But the day-to-day -day operations and the dreaming and what took place, he, he really, he, he got it from both of his parents, but the Orange Blossom Gardens and the villages, my grandfather loved it here. And he loved living here, he loved the people, he's very social. But, you know, the behind the scenes, day-to-day -day operations and ideas are, they're, they're Gary. Tell me about the core values and the, and, and the philosophy at Brownwood and, and how it's evolved down here. Is it the same philosophy you had there? There are no menial jobs. Every job is as important as the next. I think in our training manual at Brownwood, in the cover, it always said, the handshake of the host determines the taste of the roast. The catchphrase was that, you know, on the training manual yes. at the restaurant. <laughs> and it's on the training manual here. So many amazing things have happened here in the villages. People want to know what's next. How are they going to top themselves? What do you say when people ask you, what is the future of the villages? People wonder about the future of the villages. It's, it's right here. We're doing it every day. And the future of our family, we have lots of children who already work for this company in various different ways and are bringing incredible talent to the table and we're very proud of all of them. We're really lucky. Our, our kids, our grandkids could live here, they can work here and it's just, it's really neat to be a part. I mean, whatever small part I got to play in this, it's great to be able to look over your shoulder and say, wow, that's a forever thing. I think it's unusual for a family to really stay together like this, especially when we had parents who encouraged us to do everything and anything we wanted. You've said that so many people have played a part in the success of the villages. Tell us about how you've honored and recognized those people. When we start designing our town centers and, and stuff like that, we, we actually come up with a storyline first because, a fictitious storyline, let me rephrase that. The reason for it is to, um, it gives the town a life. We made up these stories about the people who lived in Spanish Springs and Lake Sumter Landing in Brownwood. And consequently, you know, uh, like any story, it's what you know and what you've lived in your life. So it, with Spanish Springs, it was extremely fun because we actually, the whole family and some of our friends and design team people, and we pulled names from people in our past. We just wanted to honor our, our history and personally and also the history of everybody who has come to help us. And, and uh, so it's, it's just really fun. And it's a fun way to say, hey, thanks. Thanks for being here. Thanks for helping us do this. Thanks for being a part of our life. Thanks for making us laugh. You'll, you notice the placards as you go around any of the towns and that'll be present in Brownwood as well where there's a cast of characters from our past, and maybe some that are recent. Maybe there are some that are named maybe after some new members of our family. Yes. Such as? Oh, such as Sharon Rose Weechens and Eleanor Lee Weechens. Hmm. <laughs> My The grandchildren. For those of us who haven't had the privilege of visiting the original Brownwood Acres, tell us what you've brought down here and recreated that's similar to the original Brownwood or the spirit of it. In the buildings that are constructed right now, we have the, the same facade as the country store, the Brownwood country store that came across the ice and didn't quite make it. Um, we have reconstructed a replica of that here. And also in some of the future buildings, we've got the Grass Lake Schoolhouse will be part of it. Yeah, we've uh, stolen a lot of goodies from there. You do have the best job. I do. I'm convinced. I do, because, <laughs> because it all has to do with your imagination. What, what would mom say if she was sitting here and looking at what you kids have done? She'd be thrilled, wouldn't she? Yeah, she'd be proud. 
But Tracy's right. She'd be more interested in the grandkids. <laughs> yeah. The great grandkids. That's right. Yeah, the great grandkids. Yeah, she'd yeah. be proud. And probably okay. What's next? Yeah. She'd be looking. Yeah. At, she'd yes. be right. She'd be looking for the next challenge, yes. just like she, the rest of us. Yep. Will. She would have had so much fun. Oh, she's here. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can hear in your voices how special this place is to you. What do you hope residents will say when they visit? Well, I hope they say we did it again. <laughs> I hope they come down here and they enjoy it as much or or, or more or in a, maybe in a different way. Yet another, Yet another un yep. unique destination for them. It's it's a it's a place where our residents can come together. They, they they have a sense of connectedness here, and and it's a whole different ambiance. So I think that's fun. It's not uh, our histories of the three towns that the fictitious histories that we've written. That there's a connectivity within the towns and a and an era that they came to be. So I I think it just you could build. A, a place where people could have a movie theater and things of such, but isn't it nice to have just an amazing atmosphere to enjoy it? And I think they'll come and discover things. Oh, well, we don't. We don't have any other plans but this. So, I think this is fun. It's exciting, and and uh, it's not the final chapter. It's just the final new chapter. We're going to be uh, we're going to be around. Our kids are going to be around, and we have a lot of work here to do for a long, long time. It's our life. Well, there you have it, folks. A very special history lesson on the village's third and final town by the very people who wrote that history. And aren't the similarities amazing? The stagecoach has become the trolley. The restaurant at Brownwood has become all the dining opportunities we enjoy here today. The shops at Brownwood Acres have become a multitude of stores and boutiques. And the entertainment that was there is ours to enjoy here 365 days a year. When you think about it though, the success of the villages today can be described in the same way it was at Brownwood Acres many years ago. It wasn't about serving a meal back then, and it's not just about building houses today. It's about something else, something much more special. It's about the experience. Through the years, you villagers have told me time and time again that you only go through life once. If you have to go through life, there's no place better to do it than right here in the villages. So as we wrap up this installment, I want to encourage you, if you haven't been here already, get out to Brownwood and Paddock Square. You are going to love it. Until next time, I'm Gary Corsair. I'll be seeing you soon exclusively in your V-Mail.